Hey guys, what's up? So, awesome high yield video in this part we will be covering coral reefs, very, 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 very important, and ecotourism. Either directly or indirectly, either in pre mains or interview, you will face one of these questions for sure. So, if you still have any doubt or if you want me to make a particular video, you can comment on the Facebook page or on the YouTube and spread the word because it will help in spreading this education revolution faster. So anyway, uh, so we'll be dealing with first coral reefs. So what do you mean by coral? What do you mean by reefs? So basically, these are formed by polyps. Polyps are from phylum Nidaria. Now those of you who have no understanding of biology whatsoever, so basically there is uh, domain, then kingdom, then phylum. I have already told in the mnemonics video how to remember them. Anyway, so there is phylum Protozoa, then uh, which includes amoeba, phylum Porifera, which includes sponges, then phylum Nidaria, which includes these coral reefs and jellyfish and sea anemone. Then we have phylum Tenophora, which includes comb jellies. Then Platyhelminthes, which include flatworms. Eschehelminthes, that include roundworms. Then we have annelids, including earthworm, arthropod, including insects like cockroach. Then we have mollusca, which include mollusks. And then we have Echinodermata, which includes starfish. So these are the 10 major invertebrate phylums. Then we have Chordata. Anyway, we will be dealing with but uh, we have diverse and varied ecosystem in uh, coral reefs because it is characterized by formation of ridge this is very very keyword ridge formation or which are also called as mouths in sea and they are formed by calcium carbonate extremely important it can be asked what is calcium carbonate in this case basically corals are living organisms which secrete these calcium carbonate something like diatoms do we have word diatoms, last video I told about them, dinoflagellates and all. They are also called as the rainforest of the sea. What, is, what are the characteristic features of rainforest? Bohati kam area occupy karte hai, relatively speaking, and they produce massive biodiversity. So one of the highest biodiversity in the world is found here. That is less than 0.1% of the world's ocean surface. That comes about to be 3 lakh kilometer square. But they occupy a surface for more than 25% of all marine species. It's huge diversity and the best growth occurs in warm that is they do not grow well in cold water then shallow that it should not be very very deep then it should be clear free of pollution and turbidity then sunny sunlight should be adequate and finally agitated water they should be constantly mixing not stale and still so basically you can see these beautiful polyps which are secreting these exoskeleton of different different colors and hues so I'll be telling what these colors are provided from and in this part you can see huge amount of fishes and huge biodiversity seen in these corals and then this is an example of a jellyfish which is found in phylum Nidaria, 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 Nidaria. and this is an example of a sea anemone and these are all the example of sea anemones they are also called as Actinaria so moving forward distribution I already told you 0.1% of the sea surf ocean surface and then the major distribution is seen in the Indo-Pacific region starting from Red Sea between Middle East and Egypt then Indian Ocean then Southeast Asia and the Pacific they account for 92% of the polyps they are found between 30 degree north and 30 degree south because they want high temperatures and sunlight temperature already told you 26 to 27 degree Celsius a warm temperature and they are extremely rare below 18 degree Celsius but they are found in certain places like Persian Gulf Reef where they tolerate very very high temperature ranges from 13 to 38 degrees Celsius now water surrounding them is not very nutritious it is very very surprising because they are supporting very high biodiversity anyway deep water and cold water corals do occur but they are rare now as I have told you color occurs because from a combination of a brown hue which is provided by zoos and thile it's a type of algae plus pigmented proteins of the corals itself like they can produce red blue greens etc so this combined with the brown hue of zoos and thilly provides a unique color to the corals now it's a very very important question why they are rare on the west coast of africa and west coast of america so you'll never find it on like uh, chile and that region because of the presence of atacama desert and el nino what happens is only in that particular time upwelling seizes but most of the time 
there is upwelling plus strong cold water oceanic currents so because of that water is not very very warm and that is why corals are very rare now the examples of corals include the great barrier reef which is the largest i'll be talking about it then mesoamerican barrier system it is seen around central uh, america especially the country called as belize it has one of the best coral reefs in the world it's a central american country the new caledonia anyone have any clue what is new caledonia so basically this is a french territory which is about 1200 kilometers east of australia it is found in the south west pacific ocean you can just see it on the map then the andros which is the bahamas barrier reef now bahamas are found very very just south to the florida and just next to cuba in caribbean sea and finally the red sea which separates the middle east from the egypt african continent and the 6000 year old fringe reef is included in this now again moving forward as you can see this is the 30 degree north and this is 30 degree south so this region is the bahamas somewhere here this is the new caledonia somewhere here and this entire belt is called as the indo pacific belt so 92% of the world's ocean uh, coral reefs are found in this belt further you can see so this is the distribution as you can see the west coast of south america plus west coast of africa is almost devoid of these corals and just see this region this region has more than 92% of the world's coral so now and this region is called as the central american or meso american system now there are three types of reef either uh, just uh, for understanding you can see here so let's assume uh, this is the sea okay so if the reef grows directly on it it is called as fringe reef is that understood now let's assume the there is a water body or a lagoon something like this this is a lagoon and then it grows here then it will become a barrier reef and now if it grows in middle of sea something like this which are top of a volcano or a caldera then it is called as atoll so these are the three type of reefs now i'll just go through them so a fringing reef it has mostly no shallow back reef zone as i've already told you or a very very shallow lagoon which is not very very prominent so fringing reefs especially common in bahamas they can grow to huge extent and they contain back reef areas which is characterized by sea grass meadows and patch reefs very very important and they are obviously found in caribbean and red sea as i have already told you so this is an example of a fringe reef you can see this is a island and just surrounding it is the reef region there is no lagoon formation this is again you can see the beach and then the reef has started so the atolls are obviously i have already told you the ring shaped coral reef which include a coral rim that encircles a lagoon partially or completely so they are more or less circular and they extend all the way around a lagoon without a central island this is a key feature there is no island like structure so ye hota kya hai basically a volcano tha that is extinct and now the jo uska eroded caldera hai caldera is the volcano crater c a l d e r a this word so ye jo hoga iska jo higher rim hoga that will remain above the water and that will be visible as atolls allowing the coral to grow into reefs now what are the condition for its persistence the rate of the continued erosion because of the ocean current and strong breezes or its subsidence is less than the rate of growth of coral which is upwards and outwards so agar rate of growth is more than rate of subsidence then the coral will persist this is a characteristic example of an atoll so as you can see there is all around sea this is absolutely sea but you can see these corners the reef has arisen because of the extinct mountain or a volcanic crater now the barrier reefs as i have already told you they are separated by a lagoon formation system so reef is separated from a mainland or an island shore by a deep channel or lagoon the characteristic example is the great barrier reef so if this is something australia so this region that is the queens queensland region has the largest barrier reef of the world this is the eastern and northern part of the australia so it includes 2900 individual reefs and it spread over 2600 kilometers and it has 900 islands so this is the barrier reef 
this huge chain and now what are the threats so this is very 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 important when color, coral uh, loses its color it is called as the coral bleaching people go to parlors and do bleaching they apply uh, bleach powder which is nothing but a solution of calcium and chlorine so when they apply it it causes bleaching because they lose their melanin pigment so the coral bleaching is the release of coral symbiotic zooxanthellae which was providing the brown hue now coral is extremely fragile ecosystem already told you they have need five conditions warm shallow sunny agitated waters are required for their growth they are specially sensitive to temperature of ocean waters so obviously if there is climate change because of greenhouse gases and global warming then the sea temperature will rise and the sea level will rise and the ph will change because of ocean acidification then because of blast fishing what they do in blast fishing is they blast something as soon as the blast occurs what happens is the fish gets stunned and the corals dies they also do what is called a cyanide to stun the fishes and the coral dies because of the cyanide spray now the coral mining also occurs because of the nutrients and all then harmful land use practices and agricultural runoff what happens is eutrophication happens i'll tell you about eutrophication in detail which leads to excess algal growth nutrition goes down and the water body dies then pollution obviously organic and inorganic overfishing i've already told you now cyanide fishing basically they spray cyanide to capture the aquarium good looking fishes because they get stunned and not killed but coral get killed afterwards sunscreen use so there is various complexes especially a titanium compound in sunscreen which leads to death of the corals and finally exploitation of reef resources this is also a major region because of the overcrowding there is huge population explosion along the coastlines plus they use sunscreens while they get tanned so that also leads to the destruction of corals and finally there is invasive exotic species in the corals now moving forward to eco tourism what do you mean by eco eco means which take cares of ecology so it is an ecologically responsible plus profit generating tourism but it is not ecological responsibility comes first profit comes second and sustainability is the key feature so it is the responsible travel to natural areas which conserves the environment and improves the well being of local people kaise karega bhai by generating revenues by generating profit which will be utilized in their economy wo bhi apne ped patte kuch phool wagera bechenge 100 200 rupees they will also earn future generations should experience destinations which are relatively untouched by human intervention so this is possible only by ecotourism and they involves visiting fragile this is keyword pristine means very very beautiful and relatively undisturbed areas why to have greater appreciation of flora that is the trees fauna that is the animals and cultural heritage so it is intended as a low impact see impact on environment cannot be high otherwise it cannot be called as ecotourism it is just another tourism then it is a small scale alternative to standard commercial or mass tourism it helps in generating local employment and earning precious foreign exchange is that absolutely understood so this is an example of ecotourism so this is the conservation bubble this is locals and this is profits so when you take care of all these three this is the ecotourism so this is a very very good diagram you can make it in your answers so it also helps in educating the traveler it provide funds for ecological conservation it benefit the locals political empowerment and economic development further agar aap jaoge aap bhi dekhoge ki they also have their distinct culture so you will have respect for them and for their human rights it will help in socially responsible travel it helps in your personal growth as well as in environmental sustainability and the last and the, not the least the most important part it, it minimizes the negative aspects of conventional tourism so conventional tourism just focuses on profit profit and profit while people and planet goes away so now you should care about planet first then people and then finally if there is scope then you should go for profit then it should enhance the cultural integrity of local people and it should promote recycling energy efficiency and water conservation now what are the principles of ecotourism 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट शुड बी ट्रिनिटी ऑफ कंजर्वेशन कम्युनिटी वेलफेयर एंड सस्टेनेबल टूरिज्म सो दिस आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इट शुड मिनिमाइज इम्पैक्ट इट शुड बिल्ड एनवायरमेंटल लोकल ट्रेडिशंस कल्चरल अवेयरनेस एंड इट शुड कंज्यूर ह्यूमिलिटी एंड रिस्पेक्ट सो दीज आर द की वर्ड्स यू शुड राइट सच आंसर वेरी वेरी ब्यूटिफुल आंसर Finally, it should provide direct financial benefit or empowerment for local uh, people also, and it should support human rights, democratic movements. It should raise sensitivity to socio-political and environmental wrongs. So I know these are very very uh, typical answers, but uh, it's very important. That's why I'm teaching them. and finally criticism of ecotourism is also there we cannot leave anything without criticism since the there are too many definitions and since the the term is vaguely defined so it can be used to twist and interpret any way and it's very very costly to implement it is hard to enforce and it is uncertain in effectiveness and in the name of sustainable ecotourism aap kya kar rahe ho you promote mass tourism you promote mass construction of hotels tourism resorts और जो मास एक्टिविटी होती है ना तो फ्रेजाइल एनवायरनमेंट गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड सिंस इट इज नॉट वेरी वेल रेगुलेटेड इट मे लीड टू डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ लोकल रिसोर्स जो पॉपुलेशन होगी दैट विल बी डिस्प्लेस बिकॉज होटल्स विल कम इन देयर हाउसेज एंड ऑब्वियसली सिंस द वहाँ पे सौ लोग रह रहे थे नाउ देर आर टेन थाउजेंड पीपल विजिटिंग सो एनवायरमेंट कैन नॉट टेक दैट लोड एंड फर्दर इट विल लीड टू प्रमोशन ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन एंड अर्बनाइजेशन and it will lead to the threat to the very local culture on which ecotourism relies jab local culture rahega hi nahi to tourism bhi destroy ho jayega and it will lead to the complete destruction of that locality anyway i hope you like the video so this is the youtube channel and academy and uh, you can ask your questions here spread the word because people are there who cannot afford coaching this is the sole reason why i make these videos and you can also tweet your problems at roman sani thank you for watching the video and an awesome day